Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop. This is just a quick video. I've got a Flair C2 thermal camera here. I use it for uh, troubleshooting and repairing boards where I want to see if there's any hot spots on the circuit board etc. And the Flair C2 is pretty good because it does have the MSX technology. And what that means is it's actually got two cameras on it. It's got the infrared one and it's also got an optical one there which uh, the software inside the camera uses the normal camera to overlay an image, an outline, an outline image onto the display so that you can see more than just the infrared image coming from the uh, sensor on the front of the camera. So um, the problem with the Flare C2 is that it's not really optimised for close-up um, uh, infrared camera work. Uh, because you've got the two sensors on the front there and uh, they're not really optimized that uh, the image from both camera uh, both sensors will overlay perfectly onto the display uh, uh, when you're looking at circuit boards anything less than say oh I don't know 18 inches something like that and then you're going to start seeing an offset so so we're looking into the back of a PDVS2 and as you can see at the bottom there that's the LM399 uh, that's the voltage reference it does have a heater built into it so it should show up pretty well on the thermal camera so if I just bring that up there and you can see on the display there you can very clearly see the hot spot there from the uh, thermal camera but actually look below it in blue there there's the actual LM399 itself so it's not great for when you're trying to uh, troubleshoot electronics because uh, I'm about 10 millimeters off there. Uh, granted, I'm about six inches away from the PDVS2. So I did actually have an idea on how to get around this problem. So the idea is I'm going to open up the C2 and see if I can manipulate one of the sensors, probably the optical one there, uh, just a little bit just to bring that image back into uh, the same plane as the uh, infrared one. I only ever use this camera for ele electronics so it's I'm always working in below you know 12 inches uh, or, or so uh, probably up to about you know four or five inches that sort of thing so I really need to have that image um, you know properly overlaid perfectly so let's open up the C2 and see what we can do about it. Right here we go Let's turn it off first. Right, we're inside the C2 and there is the optical assembly there. A couple of connections there. There is the optical assembly there and unfortunately it's all encased in metal and plastic. They're, the two sensors are actually joined at the hip by the looks of things. Uh, I'm not, just gonna look here, that's the infrared one there and that's the optical one there. You can see the optical ones are pretty small, it's just got this little flat flex coming off here down at the board whereas infrared one's got a little bit more hardware uh, around about it and then its own flat flex coming off of here and I think the idea is I'm needing to converge the two lenses slightly so looks like yes I wonder I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can have a look So that's the optical one there, so I don't think I can do anything about moving it um, because this, this is actually metal, there's two columns there and it's part of the assembly and it goes right underneath and you can see the 
the infrared red one there is actually part of it as well and there's the other end of it there so there's not much I can do about that but if I just move it there it's, I don't know if you can see that but it is actually moving if I just uh, I bring it up a little bit into the camera so you can see it is actually moving it's tilting the sensor slightly when I move it there so I wonder if that's enough so I wonder if I can put something down the side of the lens assembly there just to keep it over at that angle. Let me go and try that and see where we're going. Right, so what I've got here is a little mica insulating kit here and I've cut a slither off of the end there because it's really really thin and I hope you can see that there. I've just temporarily stuck it down the side of the sensor there and it has brought it over not sure if it's enough but I can double it up if it's necessary so let me just sort of half assemble the camera back together again and uh, see how we get on with that right there we go back together again ah not quite nearly there nearly let's go back inside the C2 again I think I need to go into a bit deeper here. So this plastic bit here just sort of lifts off. I think it's got a little heating coil there for the IR sensor because it doesn't really attach anything apart from this little flying flying lead there. Then you've got this little assembly here, little metal um, bracket there and obviously the two sensors are underneath it and this little clip on the top there holds the two sensors in place I think so I've just unclipped it but I haven't actually been inside here yet so let's just lift that off there we go. yeah okay and there's the infrared sensor there I'm not going to touch it Well, at least I don't think I need to touch it. I probably could do something with that. I could probably tilt that if I needed to, but I'll leave that as now. And this is the optical sensor. You can see my little micro washer there that I just put down the side. That's going to fall out now. And this, it just sits in there, so I really just need to tilt it by quite a bit. I wonder if I can, I wonder if I can, I wonder, I just need to tilt it a little bit, so I almost just need to file this hole there to slightly elongate it so that the sensor can sit in an angle and I can uh, prop it up at one end so that it sits squint there so I think I'll do that I'm just going to take a little file a little uh, needle file there and just file in there just to give the sensor a little bit of room to play and there we go just filed it a little wee bit there you can just sort of see inside there where I've been filing it so hopefully Yeah, wow. That's, yeah, it's definitely a lot more of an angle there. I don't know if you can see that on camera. So now I just need to find a way of just holding that in place. Um, just at that little funny angle there. Right, here we go. This is what I've done. I've taken the sleeving off of this little bit of single strand wire there cut two little bits, flattened them and stuck them on the little wee ledges that you see there at one side there and this is where the little stainless plate sits. So if I just put that in there like that and press it down, the lens is now at quite an angle there and hopefully that's enough. And I'll put a little bit of capped on tape across here just to hold that in place. 
let's give that a go. And there we go, there's the cap tone tape in place, holding it enough I think, and the sensor is at quite an angle there. A little bit of filing that I had to do, it looks like it made a little bit of difference there, I'm not so sure I needed to do it so much, but I did it a tiny little bit. But uh, it was too easy to take metal off, but <laughs> right, let's put that back together and see how it goes. Now as I'm putting this back together, you can see that this stainless part there, it's got a little uh, bent over part there, this little, uh, and that actually goes up, presses onto the back of the optical sensor there to hold it in place, so that's going to work rather nicely as well, I think. The only thing I'm worried about is I don't like using the sleeving off the single strand wire is to hold it up because it will compress over time but there's not that much force so it should be okay i would prefer to use something you know more solid but uh, we'll give that a bash when this just clips in there that's it well, that's it held together again and that's the optical sensor now pointing quite in. It's just a few degrees, but hopefully that will make enough difference. And the heater just sits in place. A couple of little clips at the side there. Again, just to hold it. Right, let's put this assembly back into the floor and see what happens. Right, I've not clipped it back into place, still a little bit loose, but the assembly's back together enough to give it a test, so let me just power it up. <coughs> and the PDVS2 is still on. Well, I think it's obvious that's what happens there. I've gone a little bit too far. Now the uh, IR image is uh, well below the LM399, so looks like I've just got to reduce the height a little bit. Let's get back into it again. And there we go. A Flare C2 optimised for about 6 inches away from subject matter. Um, of course, uh, having moved the lenses, it's, they're going to be no use for any kind of distance work. It's going to be way, way off. But for circuit boards, I think that's just uh, perfect. Five minute modification. Thanks for watching.